So we are just around the corner from not only the election, but also 2025. And based on the results of the election, it could cause a massive, massive pump in the markets. And on top of that, what does that look like for CASPA and KRC20 projects? And so in today's video, I want to do two things. I want to break down the future of CASPA in 2025, talk about some potential price predictions, and also talk about some potential predictions for KRC20 projects, as well as what you need to be keeping an eye out for KRC projects, KRC20 projects today, some new ones that are launching and some new ones that are gaining a ton of traction. So that said, if you're new here, my name is Alex, talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like that, consider subscribing. You enjoyed this video, smash up the like. But without further ado, let's jump in the video. So over the past year, Caspa's really not done a whole lot. Now, if you look at just one year to date, it's up 108%, but over the course of 2024, it's really been stuck in this channel between 10 and 20 cents after having broken out of the channel between one and five cents and went really from five straight to 10. And it's kind of been stagnant between this 10 and 20 cent range. And ironically, when you look at Quinn market cap, there's a lot of cryptos. And I think a lot of it is also based on market cap itself. There's a ton of cryptos in the top 50 that are separated by just a, a less than a hundred million dollar market cap, even less than a quarter of a, a billion dollar market cap separates these and a 10 to 20% price increase can take a token from 50th place all the way up to you know 30th. So the volatility, especially in the top 50 is extremely high. I mean, you can see it's 50 million market cap. That's the difference between CAS and uh, Fetch AI. So, that, I mean, or Artificial uh, Super uh, Intelligence Alliance, the combined AI projects. So when you look at just the, the small differentiating factors between a lot of these, they're really, really close together. And so it wouldn't ever take a project like CASPA to get into the top 10. Uh, it wouldn't take a whole lot. I mean, we're talking about, about a 4X from where it is, it would be about 40 to 45 cents. So, you know, if we do the uh, market, uh, I think it's called what market cap of, right? And you take a look at something like CASPA and you compare it to, you know, where would CASPA be at a market cap of ton coin, right? So CASPA, the market cap of ton, you know, you're looking at the, uh, I think that's the wrong ton. Um, there it is, ton coin. So it would be about uh, 48 cents or so. So I, I think when you look at Caspa realistically, and, and that would put Caspa in the top 10. Realistically, can Caspa go to about 48 cents, which really is only a 2x from its prior all-time high. In a bull market scenario, I think that's very, very reasonable. Now you have to realize all the other coins are also going to increase. So if ton goes up by you know 50%, that means Caspa has to therefore increase by that much more. So when you look at the top 10, is it possible for Caspa to get into the top 10 in 2025? I think it is possible. Uh, and I think when you look at what is currently in the top 10, Projects like Tron, Tuncoin, um, those could be dethroned by a project like Caspa. I don't think Cardano, Shiba Inu, Avax, Chainlink, I don't think any of these here that you see currently above Caspa have anything greater than what Caspa has to offer. So we have to kind of look at, you know, could these go up 10, 20% more over that period of time? Sure, but I think Caspa has what it takes to go up greater than what these could go up in that same time frame. So. Could Caspa break into the top 10 in 2025? I think it is possible. Is it probable? I think it, there is a level of probability. I think there's still going to be a lot of categories, specifically meme coins, that are going to get a lot more attention that could have greater spikes that could maybe take some of those spots in the top ranking cryptocurrencies. So I think it all depends on what is really the attention of the category in 2025. But I do think that it is possible and I don't think it would be uh, that unbelievable. I, I don't think people would be all that surprised if Caspa did break into the top 10 by the end of bull market, which could be 20, end of 2025. So that said, outside of Caspa possibly breaking into the top 10, 
I think there's going to be a lot of potential catalysts. We've kind of covered these already as far as what could be coming to CASPA uh, to bring more uh, overall uh, dollars to CASPA, bring more liquidity to CASPA, especially to KRC20. Now, the other thing that I think is super bullish that is going to impact the overall uh, future of CASPA is what's called HODL waves. Now, this is from Caspolytics, fantastic website. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. Uh, but this essentially shows holders, same way that you look at Bitcoin wallets and that you know have held for five years and never moved. Uh, this does it for Caspa. And if you look at this, you can see the percentage growth of users that have been holding Caspa for a longer period of time. So even if we go back to uh, June of this year, we saw the percentage about 5% of those who were holding longer than two to three years. So these are long-term holders. These are hodlers. These are ones that regardless of the highs, regardless of those are still holding their cash, but it's not been moved. Now you see that number increase to about 7%. We're starting to see, and, and I mean, at, at one point when we saw at the beginning of this year is around 2%. So we've seen that number gradually grow and we see other numbers as well when it comes to ones that have been one to two years. So you're starting to see one to two years was 11%. Now that number is about 18%. So you're starting to see this differentiating factor of people that are holding through the lows and aren't selling during the highs because they are long-term believers in what Casper brings to the table and the technology that it offers. So it is interesting when you look at some of the overall bullish metrics of caspa and you start to see you know what are some of these things that are bringing more attention driving more value uh, you can also see what happened recently with a ton of new addresses being onboarded for caspa these are a number of unique active addresses when krc20 launched that was a very very new thing to caspa we saw an a massive influx of new wallets created new people trying to get involved and i think this is the some of these spurts are short-lived some of these will continue to increase as more utility and more dApps come to Caspa's ecosystem. Now, when you take a look at the price action, this is one thing that we've talked about as well. You know, th this is a, a very strong level of support for Caspa. We see a, a high level of resistance, specifically at the 20 cent range. So that was a terrible straight line. But either way, it gets the point across, this is a channel that I think we could be stuck in. But when we break out of this channel, you know, expect, I think we can definitely expect a 50 cent CASPA next year. I don't think it's very unrealistic. I think at a blow off top in a peak market scenario, like I've talked about before, I think a dollar to a dollar 50 is very realistic. Now, I realize for some people they would call that FUD. And I get that because I'm also bullish, extremely bullish on CASPA, but I want to bring myself a little bit down and, and touch some grass and, and bring myself level with the earth to realize that yes, while I think that it could be possible, is it probable? In, in my opinion, I don't think it's as probable for Casper to go to $10 or to $5 next year. Futuristically, yes, but not next year. So a realistic price target, I think, for Casper is going to be between uh, at least 50 cents and I think on the high about a dollar fifty. That is just my personal opinion, but I think there's could be a lot more that could be coming. Uh, one thing that a lot of people also pay attention to is the power law. A lot of people pay attention to this when it comes to Bitcoin, talking about you know how the power law does it apply and oftentimes the opportunities that when it comes to the perfect buying opportunities for Casma is oftentimes when it touches this purple line. You can see this was put together by a, a few individuals but you can see the times when it hit those lines uh, were the times that it also ran up massively. So it'll be very interesting to see. You can see this similar parallel with Bitcoin when it would reach these purple areas as perfect opportunities to buy and you would see further rallies after. So CASPA, all things considered, you're seeing tremendous growth as far as overall active addresses. You're seeing growth in longtime holders. And you're overall seeing also a depleting supply uh, as far as the amount of CASPA being mined. There's less and less CASPA to be mined. So you have a supply and demand aspect and you have a with what could be a very um, momentous election, <laughs> for lack of better terms. You can see a really, really uh, bullish 2025. And those are really five key things that could really drive the price of CASPA to fire higher highs. 
I think realistically, $1.36 is my peak price target. I think 50 cents um, is, is probably gonna be the right in the middle uh, of where CASPA is gonna be. So that is my, my expectations for CASPA 2025 moving forward. Now, outside of this, when all of this bullishness for CASPA is gonna come, the unique thing behind KRC20 is it actually operates really outside of CASPA. And I say that to say, because when CASPA recently has you know kind of been on the low side, what we've seen with KRC20, we've seen KRC20 projects do insanely well. I've talked about a lot of these. We've talked about these before they even launched. We've talked about some as they've launched uh, and, and some of these have gone and done really, really well. You know, there's some that we've talked about uh, already on the channel that have done really well. Uh, there's ones that I've talked about on Twitter that have done really well. So if you don't follow me on Twitter or X, do make sure that you do so. Uh, but I want I do want to highlight a few of these, some of the things that they're doing and what you can pay attention to in other projects that are doing these things that are going to gain a lot of attention. So uh, the first one is Kango. Now, uh, Kango is a very interesting project, and we've seen this also with the likes of Caspi, is it's correlated directly back to an animal, a real-life animal that can draw that attention because of a successful project, you either want to draw it to a live animal or to something that is unique, inherent, and native to Caspa or GhostDAG uh, or the technology of uh, the ecosystem, the block DAG, whatever it may be itself. So you to be a successful project, you have to do one of those two things. So with the likes of Nacho, for example, to Shai's cat, um, we've seen the likes of Casper to Casper when it comes to the technology within uh, Ethereum to a being a ghost. Um, we've seen the likes of Kango, which is a real life uh, chameleon, I believe it is. I might be wrong, but we've we've seen kind of these kind of correlations that I think are really, really attractive, uh, but we've not really seen anything that has been native to the block DAG and the history and the name of how ghost DAG came about. So we're gonna talk about that uh, in just a second. But Kingo is one I talked about on Twitter. You can see it's done really, really well. I mean, you look at from the the floor price what we've seen um from you know it, it's done for la it launched about a hundred million a hundred thousand dollar market cap so if you look at the current market cap that's about an 80x from where it launched initially so you've seen kango do extremely well uh, the overall website you can see the website's pretty uniquely put together um i've talked to one of the individuals behind kango uh really really cool individual and I, I think there's some level of uniqueness behind Kango that makes it appealing uh, alongside of that, the direct con uh, connection back to the idea of a real life animal uh, that kind of draws that attention to a lot of people. Now, there is another one that is launching called Phantom. Uh, I've talked about Phantom. I'm working with the project as well. Uh, and what's unique about Phantom is Phantom, if you go back into the history, this is a project that is tied back, directly back into the technology of CASPA and the original technology of CASPA. So CASPA is based on the Ghost Dag Phantom Protocol, a scalable generation of the Nakamoto consensus. Now, if you look at the original do, uh, document that was put together by Yonatan, uh, Shai, and other individuals, they talked about uh, Phantom Ghost Dag, and Phantom was kind of the initial uh version of what ended up becoming Ghost Dag. Ghost Dag was the kind of the better version of it. Uh, and Ghost Dag got its name from a movie called Ghost Dog. Uh, I guess a popular movie way back in the day. So you have this kind of idea of uh, the name Ghost Dag got its name from a movie about Ghost Dog and or a movie called Ghost Dog. So Phantom being the first Ghost Dog on Caspa is kind of where it has that native uh, connection back to the ecosystem and really the beginning of what became Caspa. So I would highly recommend that if you're not following Phantom on Caspa, definitely do so. Now, other projects, Dagnight Dog, this is one I've talked about, but I think there's something interesting behind Dagnight Dog. A lot of people have the mixed feelings on fair launches, and I completely understand that. I think what Dagnight Dog is doing from a marketing standpoint will probably make it one of the most recognizable by noners per se, right? Those who aren't involved in Caspa or aren't involved in the Caspa ecosystem are gonna gain a ton of exposure to projects like Dag Night Dog just because of the marketing exposure that they are doing overall on the project side. So it is one that I definitely think that when you look at opportunities, when a lot of these correct, some of these were hitting all-time highs, it was absolutely insane. 
how much these grew as far as market cap. It was absolutely insane. Just from a few days ago, uh, we saw some of these just absolutely peaking. I mean, when you go back, and I just want to go very briefly back to, um, you know, for example, I think it was, you know, just take Caspi. Caspi's corrected uh, pretty hard, but you can see from a month ago, it was sitting at about a $26 million market cap, which made it about a 250X from original launch. So it was insane seeing some of these numbers uh, in the very, very beginning. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more projects coming. Kango was a recent one. I mean, you look at some of the KRC20 projects, you see some of these going from zero, from 100K market cap, which is what most of these launch at, to about a million to two million pretty quickly. And so you can see ones like uh, Kango did this in 14 days. It was about 100X in 14 days. Kind of insane to think about. Um, there's some stick is six days old is sitting at $2 million market cap. They've actually reached out to me a couple of times for partnerships, but you know, there's some of these that have launched that are relatively new from a project perspective and they do really, really well. And there's great opportunities to do a five, 10 X, uh, within the Casper ecosystem. You don't have to go to pump.fun and get rugged on 99.9% meme coins. But either way, um, I do want to talk about KDAO. KDAO is a very interesting one, uh, one that a lot of people talked about, a lot of people got involved in, and it is the first uh, DAO, publicly visible Casper DAO management group on Telegram, made up of volunteers that have initial ideas and skills to set up a workable framework that will allow for a decentralized autonomous system. So I think this is a very interesting approach to what KDAO is doing. They have some different things that they are uh, operating here. Um, this is still rel relatively early, still very new, but a lot of the things that they're wanting to implement and do with NKDAO, I think would be extremely beneficial to the growth of CASPA and KRC20 as a whole. So, you know, when you look at uh, the overall growth of CASPA, the overall growth of KRC20, uh, both of these things are monumentous things that have happened in just the last two years. So when in doubt, zoom out, this is still really, really early. Imagine uh, a pro something like Bitcoin doing what CASPA has done in just two years, right? So there, there's a lot of things. Bitcoin's been around for, uh, you know, depending on the time frame, 15 plus years. CASPA has not been around that long. I think when you look in the perspective of what Casper has accomplished versus what Bitcoin has accomplished. Even when you look at other projects like Ethereum or Cardano, you look at AVAX, you look at all these other projects that a lot of people look at and say have all this massive potential, what they've done in the amount of time they've had, Casper has done quite a bit in the short time that it's been uh, in the mainstream. So I think there's a lot of things to be excited about. I'll drop links and socials down below if you want to check out some of these projects. But let me know your thoughts. Comment them down below. Where do you see Casper? What is your price prediction for Casper in 2025? If you enjoyed this video, smash up the like. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.